Welcome to Grammar with Lily. I am glad that you are learning with me. This week we talked about verbs. Most verbs tell an action or a state. Action verbs like walk tell what the subject does. Stative verbs like know tell something true about the subject. In this lesson, you will learn about a very special stative verb, be. Be is a verb, but it is a very special verb. Be is special. Be is special in a lot of ways. The first way is this. Most verbs can carry information about the subject. They tell us a subject is singular. How? Add S to the base verb, yes. Two cats walk, one cat walks. Base verb walk, add S for singular. But B doesn't work like this. B is special. The base verb is B, but it changes three ways depending on the subject. I am a teacher. You are a student. A cat is an animal. Oh my gosh. None of these even sound like be. What happened? Are they even the same verb? Well, yes and no. English grew from many old languages over hundreds of years and different verbs just sort of got joined together to make this one verb, be. Because we use be all the time, everyone just learns all the different forms instead of simplifying it to sound like most other English verbs. Be is special. So, be has three different forms or shapes in the present tense. For singular, is. Martha is a woman. Ahmed is a boy. A cat is an animal. So he, she, it is my friend. For plural subjects, my sons are actors. They are actors. For I, you, and we, oh, it gets even more complicated here. You and we are, but I am. You are a student, we are friends, I am a teacher. Notice that we did not use the base form, be, for any of these. <laughs> we used is, are, and am. But did you notice that we still have an S for the singular subject? He, she, or it is my friend. So this very irregular verb is at least regular a little bit. Keep practicing be until next time.